Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming out here today. Uh, I'd be happy to answer a few questions this afternoon about the aircraft crash on uh, Saturday afternoon. Obviously, uh, as most of you know, we had a U-28A crash in Djibouti. There were four personnel on board. All four of them were killed in the accident. Uh, their families have been notified and uh, the names have been released. I believe you all have that and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have on uh, any of the details that I'm, a, uh, that I'm able to talk about uh, for the next few minutes. What can, I, what can you tell us about the mission? I know you're not really in liberty to talk too much about it, but what can you tell us about the mission? Well, they were on an operational mission supporting uh, uh, Operation Enduring Freedom. They were flying out of Camp uh, Lamonier in Djibouti at the main international airport in Djibouti. The uh, U-28A is an intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance platform. It provides a variety of uh, intelligence um, um, uh, services to forces on the ground. Uh, the basic crew is, is four uh, on the airplane and all four that were on board the aircraft at the time of the mishap uh, died. Is there anything right now, can you tell us if it's mechanical or pilot error or anything along those lines? Right. We don't, we don't have the specifics yet. There is an interim safety investigation board that uh, has taken possession of the crash site that is preserving the evidence. There will be a formal safety investigation board that travels over this week, led by a general officer, in order to determine the exact details. They have uh, uh, safety trained um, personnel that go as part of that team, maintenance, uh, operations that look through the wreckage. They determine uh, from uh, um, instrument indications, black boxes, whatever is available to them, they'll reconstruct the, the mishap sequence to try and determine what caused the crash. But right now, we don't have any of that information. We're just, at this point, we're focused on preserving the evidence at the crash site itself. Talk about these uh, men, their personalities, what they meant to this uh, facility here. Take it from there. You bet. The, uh, so the four that were on board were all um, um, line operators, meaning this was their primary duty was to fly and employ this airplane. Uh, they were all very experienced. Uh, there were none on their first deployment. Uh, they've all been deployed several times. You know, our motto in the Air Force Special Operations Command is that we're the quiet professionals. And so I would say that these, these men uh, that died on this crash probably exemplified that. Probably not people that uh, really um, stood out for any particular um, any habits or behavior, they just uh, quietly went about their work uh, providing um, high quality air support for forces on the ground. Um, there were four of them involved. Uh, there was a, um, Captain Hall was the aircraft commander and uh, um, um, was on his seventh deployment. Um, we had uh, Captain Whitlock was uh, on his fifth deployment. Uh, Lieutenant Wilkins was on board the aircraft. This was his third deployment. And then uh, Airman Shulton um, uh, was on his third deployment as well. So these were folks that had deployed before and, uh, and, and were used to the environment that they were operating in. You might not be able to answer this, but we've seen a lot of these uh, men and women coming home, deployments ended, uh, tours ended. Do you know anything specifically about, about these people? Were they coming home soon? Well, typically the deployment length for all of our air crews is driven by the operational pace that they fly at. And so there, there are specific rules in place that describe to us how many flying hours they're allowed to, to accumulate in a 30, 60, and 90 day period. And because of these assets are in very high demand, what ends up happening is these crews typically fly a whole lot of flying hours in a short period of time, and then we need to rotate them home to reset before we can deploy them out again. And so one of the things that uh, uh, I can say that's kind of characteristic of the U-28 fleet in general is because we fly the aircraft at a, at a fairly high operational tempo, um, their deployments are not, uh, are not e extended deployments. They do a lot of them. For shorter periods of time and so these these crews uh, you know it depended on each crew member had been deployed for a different period of time but uh, but none of them had been there for uh, anything on the order of you know four or six months it was it was typically something shorter than that I would say probably on average uh, those crew members because of the rate that they uh, the rate that they fly at had all probably been in place for, for uh, on the order of two months maybe can you talk about what things have been like here well, of course, uh, our whole community is, is grief-stricken by this. Every one of the things that's unique 
about uh, Special Operations Command and our flying units is we have composite wings. And what that means is that each one of our flying units, uh, our flying wings, our groups, are all made up of, of different types of airplanes that bring different types of support to the forces on the ground. And so we have, for example, we have AC-130 gunships, we have these U-28s, we have MC-130s, we have helicopters, CV-22s, and all of those things knit together very closely on a day-to-day -day basis because when, when we deploy them, when they're doing their operational mission, that's how they employ, is, is with one another. And so these units all have a very close relationship, both downrange, but also here at Hurlburt. They train together locally. And so unlike many places where the, the units tend to be fairly uh, isolated, the units here tend to be very knitted together. And so uh, what you find is that, uh, you know, the, the human stories here, some of these folks had roommates that were in another squadron. And so what we found is that there are connections all across the wing and we're all grieving together for, for these four men. Can you talk a little bit about the background of the men? Do you know if they're here, if they live here locally or if they're from other states? Are our family flying in for, for this? They are, they, they all do live here locally. Um, um, their, their, their family situations vary. Um, some had family in the local area, some have family from out of state that, uh, um, that we don't know yet what our timeline for memorial service will be. We will obviously do a memorial service here at Hurlburt uh, sometime maybe late this week or, or next week, depending on the, the timeline of what is uh, best for the families and, and what the units can accommodate. Um, so I expect that we will have family rep representation when we do the memorial services, but it's too soon to tell. Um, right now, the, the, you know, kind of the thing that the families are focused is on is the uh, dignified transfer of remains ceremony that occurs at Dover Air Force Base as those, as those uh, remains come back to the States. Do you have data when they will come back? Uh, the, the dignified transfer ceremony is, uh, will probably take place sometime in the next 36 hours or so. Uh, I don't have the exact time, uh, but it, it should happen uh, soon, uh, in probably in the next 36 hours. Uh, and then once we get through that and the families start making their individual funeral arrangements uh, and, and we determine what their availability is, at that point we'll figure out when we're going to be able to do a memorial service. When you say they're from here locally, they, they weren't born and raised here. All, all these men were assigned and stationed here. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. No long-term look big ties here, I guess. Uh, no, uh, no, nothing, uh, none of them were, were born and raised here, that, that's correct. Can you talk a little bit about the aircraft? Uh, I mean, does this have, uh, are they prone to crashing or has there been any problems in that model before or anything like that? Well, the, the U-28 is uh, based on the, the uh, Pilatus PC-12 airframe. It's a, a single engine turboprop uh, airplane. It's very, very reliable. Um, this is the first um, uh, crash with fatalities that we've had in our U-28 fleet. The uh, Pilatus PC-12 in general is, uh, is a very reliable airplane. It's got a uh, Pratt & Whitney PT-6 turboprop engine, which is one of the most widely used turboprop engines in the world. So, no, there's not a, there's not a particular history of uh, um, these aircraft being accident prone. We don't have any um, indications that there is any kind of design or manufacturing flaw at this point. You know, we have a safety board that's going to dig into that, but um, but the basic airframe that the U-28 is built off of is a, is a widely, widely proliferated uh, civilian single-engine turboprop airplane that uh, um, has a good safety record. Now, I know the accident was on Saturday. Do you know what time the accident took place and were they where were they flying to from, from, from they were on their way they were on their way back to their recovery base at uh, Camp Lamonier uh, in Djibouti at the international airport there and uh, the, they were uh, the crash location itself uh, w was in a handful of miles it was within a dozen miles of the aircraft they were on their way back uh, after completing their mission in where, support of where were they flying from then they, it, it was a they take off and land oh, in uh, in Djibouti gotcha, gotcha. yeah okay I got time for one more question these memorial services are obviously pretty emotional. Can, can you kind of talk about that? I know you don't know exactly what to expect when this one happens, but can you kind of describe you know, what folks will be feeling and be going through. Well, sure. The, uh, the memorial services are really intended to help our, uh, our team at Hurlburt and to help the families um, kind of begin to work their way through the grieving process. It, it is a, an attempt 
uh, to provide um, for many of the folks on Hurlbird, it is the beginning of closure um, for dealing with their own grief here. And so typically what will happen at these memorial services is uh, there will be um, people that know the, the men that were involved that will have an opportunity to speak. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about each one of them, 